what's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to take a look at the valentine machine from hack the box the valentine machine is an easy machine yet it is qualified as an oscp machine you can check my list of all of the oscp machines i will put the link in the video description after we finish the task of today so what do we have today so in the valentine machine as the name suggests it's about hearts right and the first milestone in this machine is the exploitation of the heart bleed vulnerability so once you access the uh, web page of the machine on port uh, 443 there will be an image suggesting that you might be or you might look for heart bleed vulnerability if the machine is vulnerable to that or not so basically we will go over that and we will see various ways to test web servers for heart bleed vulnerability now for starters if you don't know what is heart bleed the heart bleed vulnerability is a bug in the older versions of open ssl so basically what happens if you have if you, are, if you run an open ver uh, older version of OpenSSL, uh, it would open the chances for exploiting a weakness where an attacker would send data to your server, right? Now, by sending data to the server, we call it random data. Random data, right? Via curl. You can use curl, by the way, to send random data. So they can send random data to the server. And the server every time responds with random chunks from memory so basically what happens is the server will return like that chunks from the memory now what is unique about these chunks is that let me remove this part take it here now what's unique about this part guys of memory is that sometimes you might be stumbling upon sensitive details uh, in the return data so in the example we have today when we exploit the heart bleed vulnerability or when we find if it is if it's vulnerable what we're gonna do we're gonna use the available exploits public exploit to send these random data here and uh, it's gonna actually return in the, in the case of a uh, valentine machine it will return pays 64 string right we will convert this base 64 string back into plain text all right and it will turn out that this plain text is actually a password for an rsa private key now after we extract the pay 64 string we will continue enumeration using directory brute force where we will stumble upon um, a hex content okay the hex content is actually uh, converted back into its ASCII okay and the ASCII code and the ASCII actually is an RSA private key so the password for the RSA private key is the password we have found or the string or the plain text string of the base64 we found by exploiting the heart bleed. That's the connection. Once we find the RSA key and we have the password, we can proceed to SSH. Now, after we have access or the first foothold um, to become root, so basically our ultimate objective is from SSH to root but how has this gonna happen the catalyst to becoming root from SSH, SSH access actually uh, can be two options the first one the system is vulnerable to the dirty cow exploit and there are thousands of walkthroughs about dirty cow exploits um, it's easy download the exploit run it you are root and the next one is tmux privilege escalation so basically what is tmux is guys uh let's make this closer so before we go over the concept of privilege escalation through tmux tmux is actually uh if you don't know what's tmux it's terminal multiplexer terminal multiplexer 
so the concept of multi multiplexer is that you can run multiple commands right uh, using the same session that's the function of tmux and in the scenario here guys uh, we find that tmux is being run as root like that so tmux dash s you specify the session and then the path to the session was something like dev slash dev underscore s something like that so basically we found that this process is running as root and when we examine the directory of the session we can find we find that the user that we are logged in in the ssh the user called hype hype as a group has write access on dev underscore s so if you run our so if you run tmux right uh, it will open a session as root because it's running as root that's the concept so basically we're gonna go this path path number two so that's the theory let's now jump to the practice here we go the in-map scan we have 22 ssh 80 http and 443 right ssl and that is that's it so if we open the browser now while the browser is opening i have also here scanned as you can see uh the port 443 on the same machine using the dash dash script variable to indicate that i want to look for vulnerabilities uh, uh they are actually existed on the machine on port 443 so i find that actually it is vulnerable if you scroll down it says vulnerable the hard bleed bug is serious vulnerability in the popular open as i said crypto oh my god <laughs> oh, that's actually yeah so open ssl cryptographic software library it allows for stealing information intended to be protected by ssl tls encryption that is actually the thing i mentioned earlier in the video that when you send random data to the server it will respond with random data back and the fact that ssl is responsible for protecting data transfer between you and the server is actually the key to understand this vulnerability the data coming back from the server is actually coming in plain text so it means the hard bleed makes you makes ssl failing to encrypt the content or the data between you and the server traveling between you and the server okay so let's go here and type 10 10 10 7 9 bad request your browser sent a request that the server couldn't understand okay let's use hey https instead advanced i'm gonna accept the risk and continue right so that is the image that is indicative uh, on the hard bleed vulnerability so that's why when we saw this image we scanned the target on port 443 to see if it's actually vulnerable now what is another way to scan for hard play so another way is let me jump to the notes and go to the sheet and i'm gonna search for heart bleed so discover you can use ssl lies let me see if i uh, if i have this tool on my machine ssl lies so i have it okay so with ssl lies we can specify the target and dash dash heart bleed so let's copy that And the target is 10 10 10 7 9 this will also do a scan and check if the target is vulnerable as you can see here guys vulnerable server is vulnerable to hard bleed okay so now we know that the server is vulnerable let's jump to the exploitation part so one method to exploit is that we search using search ploid um heart bleed There are multiple vulnerabilities the one that will work is this one 
OpenSSL 1.0 and it is on memory disclosure. You can retrieve this vulnerability at the expo and try it. So search, let's first make directory Valentine and search. Dash M, and we copy the path. Okay. Ls. Where is the one? Okay, so nano three two. Let's take a look at the exploit first. Quick and dirty demonstration of CVE. Um, the author disclaims, okay, anything else to modify? Let's check this out. So, description, test for heart bleed vulnerability, okay. Anything else? Um, this is, these, actually, let's go back. Look at this. So this is what actually being sent to the server. Random data, right? Okay, let's try it out. So let's first copy this one, cp32, into the directory of Valentine. cd Valentine. Okay. Python 3, 10, 10, 10, 7, 9. Okay, so that is what we received. Server returned more data than it should. Server is vulnerable. And these actually, this is the return data from the server, all zero. And here we have actually the, the meaningful data. Let's actually, what do we do first? Let's uh, accept or, you know, remove these from the output. So what do we do here? We can use grep dash V and Put couple zeros here. And this way actually we exclude the zeros. Let's try if this works. Okay. So that what we received. So here we found nothing, right? We have to keep running until we find something. As you can see, every time we receive different response from the server. So it's not actually feasible if we keep running like that. So what do we can do, guys, if you want to use this exploit? We can use a for loop, right? For loop and run this exploit like 1000 times. And store the output in different files, go through the output files, and you can find the unique folder that you want. So that's one method. But this is actually the longest method in exporting this vulnerability. So what we can do, guys, we can do for in, um, say, open, like, where is this one? Yeah. Say, sequence one until, say, 90 times, or you can type 100 times, 1,000 times. Do Python, and you can run the exploit itself on the target. And as we did earlier, we, we can uh, exclude, exclude the zeros. I think my keyboard is failing me. I have to change this keyboard. So let's go up. Okay, let me type them myself in this case. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then after we finish this, you can direct the output to some file such as output and use here the dollar sign, right? And then I. Actually, forget the I here for I in, yeah. This will create like 10,000 files. You can have to go over these files. That's the long way. Now, another way is Another way, guys, let's go back and see the exploitation methods. There is an active exploit here. Let's take a look at this one. 
check out this exploit. Okay. <clears throat> this is a Python exploit. Let's see, grab it. ls hardly.py now let's see how we run this one all right so options arguments seems like we're gonna have to specify only the ip address okay Python heart bleed ten 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 seven nine. Okay, let's see this. So again, we have um, we have actually data returned, but not the data we want. Connection attempt one of one. So we're gonna have to repeat this, I, I guess, more than one time. And this time, actually, we have something meaningful. As you can see, slash decode, and we have base64. Now, what we can do, we can grab this and decode it. So, echo, paste, base64-d, and this is the password I talked to you about, guys. Heart bleed, believe the hype. So that's the first milestone in this challenge. Okay, now the next one is to run directory search to search for hidden directories. Okay, let's do that. Sudo or let's do that in a separate tab. We want to keep the results as is here and use sudo go buster dir dash u http 10 10 10. 79-w user share or lists um dear they are buster and then we use directory list okay nope not this one Let's pick up the medium directory list um, to okay, and also we can enumerate for file extensions text PHP and HTML. In the meanwhile, let's check out decode page. slash decode.php secure data decoder no data is stored on our servers this is meaningful it decodes data so let's see if we can decode this one that we already decoded but we're going to try this out hackers are curious submit yeah so this decoder is, was intended guys for you to decode the string that was returned from the server and this is the output okay if you have time you can just check you can do your testing on this input box for web vulnerabilities like xss sql injection and so on and so forth but that's not the uh, objective of this challenge let's go back so see here we have index index dev and dev slash okay let's check out the dev here so dev not it's like December 
dev. So dev is actually directory listing and we have hive and notes. Take a look at the notes. To do coffee, which I am drinking right now. Research, fix decoder encoder before going live. Make sure encoding decoding is only done on client side. Don't use a decoder until any of this is done. Find a better way to take notes. Fine. Hype key. And this is the hex key. So what do we do, guys? Let's take this. Grab this one. And actually, we can download this key to our machine. So let's do it here. Wget. And let's disable the check for certificates since we have... Um, certificates okay so we have the hype key ls cat hype key this is the x this is the hex content we can decode this easily guys without the need for online tools cat hype key and then we use x xsd dash r dash p this is actually a command to decode the hex content and we have an RSA key. The RSA key seems to be encrypted from here. So what we can do, we can store this in a file in order to be ready to use the password we had. So basically, let's direct this to RSA underscore encrypted. How about this one? Okay. Cat RSA. Okay. This is an encrypted RSA key. And Obviously, we have the password here that needs to be used. We're going to need to use this password. So this is the uh, obvious place. Okay, so now we can use open SSL RSA dash in. So here we define the input key. The input key is RSA encrypted. And the output key dash out will be RSA alone. Right? What do you think? Enter the passphrase for RSA. So here we have the passphrase. Copy that. Paste. Get RSA. And we decrypted the private key. Now this private key is ready to be used to log in to the SSH server. So here we go. SSH dash, dash I RSA. Now we're going to have to decide which user to use here. So I don't know actually, there is no hint of any user here. So we're going to just grab the IP address of the machine. Here is the machine. This is the IP. And see if we will land on certain user. Type yes. Let's see here. Um, I'm trying to find out if we have to so there is a password here it's suggesting that I'm logging in as my username here which is not the case I'm gonna have to find the user the username that I need to use so going back check the notes okay heart bleed believe in the believe the hype hype let me check this back hype key so it could be hype hype <clears throat> coffee in the morning nothing like coffee in the morning guys Okay, now we are logged in. So, dirty cow exploit, right? New name dash A. And let's see here. Uh -huh. Linux Valentine 3.2.0 generic. You can Google this guy, guys, and you will find that it is vulnerable to the heart bleed. Let's talk about the Tmux now. 
So px dash aux grep tmax. This is the one I, I talked to you about, guys. About. As you can see, tmax dash s slash dev dev session, and it is running as root. So if we spawn a session now, it will be spawned as root, right? So what's what's uh, actually unique about tmax is, is that, as I told you guys, it allows you to spawn multiple sessions or multiple terminals from the same session. Um, so what do we do here, guys? We can try to issue tmax as hype and see if it will spawn a new terminal as root. So before doing this, let's check out this directory. So cd or ls-la devs. So take a look at this. This is the session file, right? And um, as you can see, it's owned by root and the user hype, which we are, has read and write access on this session. So it means we can actually use it, right? So let's try to spawn a new terminal dash s to spawn a new uh, session here and then we define say devs um, where is the other one dev okay and this is a new session as you can see root at valentine cd root ls cat root and this is the root flag curl let's say let's check this out out of curiosity right let's see this so user curl dash i dash x making a post request with this user agent to the decode page using this cookie here session id data binary text oh my goodness take a look at this one text equal page 64 so actually this is the, the decoder page that we saw earlier decoder to decode the base 64 text decode PHP. so this one actually is making post request right to this page with this text if you run curl with sh now what's gonna happen curl So nothing is returned since the output actually has been redirected to dev null. All right, no, don't mind this one. This is the flag, and let's try this flag. If this is maybe this is not the, 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 real, the real flag here. I don't know. So machine, how do you think? It's actually below medium, so I guess it is three, and it's the right flag. So that was it, guys. I hope you found this video informative. And definitely I will see you in the next video.